Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome back my dear friends, a very good morning, uh, good afternoon and good evening to all of you wherever you are in this part of this globe. And this is uh, the SWAM lecture series and the title being Investment Analysis and Portfolio Management. And my good name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department at IIT Kanpur in India. So from this being the third lecture, from here we will start about discussing more about the investment processes, the general introduction. And what is the lecture title, lecture descriptions? I will uh, go through that slowly. So, maybe they would be uh, in the descriptions we would uh, have written uh, a lot of things which I will cover. Maybe, maybe in the there is a spillover in the fourth lecture and so on and so forth, but we will definitely cover. And in general, all the concepts will be dealt accordingly. So, as you know, this is investment analysis portfolio management under the SWAM lecture series. The title of the lecture is introduction of in to investment of investment analysis. It will be more be a introduction. So, depending on what you consider the different type of investments and how the returns are calculated, what are the important terms, we lay stress on that and that is going to come in the fourth slide. So, here it is. So, general descriptions would be about the introduction. So, what we mean by, uh, by investment analysis, why investment analysis is done through the course of discussion, I will definitely uh, be uh, coming back to this point, repeating in different ways. We will also consider what is a security, a, fi a financial asset, uh, how the securities, uh, uh, what is the definition and how they can be utilized in forming the portfolios and can be considered for the investment analysis. We will also consider that for any security depending on the prices, the, how the total returns or the rate of returns are calculated uh, based on which we do analysis in the optimization framework. We will consider the T bill with the treasury bills, 91 day government bills and which would give you some brief background before we come to the concept of what is uh, risk free interest rate. And when I use the word risk free interest rate, it may not be immediately evident, but it will come out slowly during the discussion. We will consider or, or discuss uh, briefly what are long term bonds, short term bonds, how long term bonds and short term bonds with respect to the time frame, how the investment analysis can be done only in the time frame because the interest rates are different for long time duration, short time durations and they can be included in your portfolio can be considered in your investment analysis depending on what is your time frame. We will consider what are the financial intermedi intermediaries, they need not be banks only, they can be different type of financial intermediaries and which basically come into the picture to smoothen or basically facilitate the financial transaction. We will see later on that how FIs uh, can be considered in different scenario, uh, but obviously the main focus would not be the FIs. We will consider late, the later on that based on the Markowitz model and that Markowitz model will be coming up later that why risk and return are considered as the main metric based on which you can analyze your investment and decisions. And when we mention about risk and return, obviously the next question or the next bullet point as you can see is basically the expected value and the variance, what we mean by expected value in the very simplistic sense and we will consider from, from the simple terminology only and what is considered as the variance and how standard deviation and other risk measures are utilized. Variance is a type of risk. We will consider the concept of short selling and how short selling can be included in your investment processes and uh, how short selling does have an implication in your overall portfolio, how the weights are distributed, 
how the risk returns are calculated. The calculation methodology is the same, the out, but, but the results would be different. And we will um, uh, hopefully, if we proceed in a decent speed, we will be able to cover investment decisions, what are the main steps on investment decision. And that would be more from a philosophical point of view. And later on, as we consider throughout the course, we will be crossing all the and covering these topics mentioned under investment decisions um, in the logical sequence. So, almost everyone owns a portfolio, which is a conglomeration of asset or a basket of asset. And by the word asset, I do not mean only financial stocks. It can be gold, it can be bonds, it can be land, it can be a car, it can be a property. But for initially, we will definitely be discussing about that, but later on, when we do the problems or when we, when we consider the simple mathematical tools, mathematical models, we will only keep it focused to the stocks. And they are primarily held, these conglomeration of assets are primarily held uh, for investment purposes, because I want to invest x amount and get some extra amount delta x depending on my uh, investment. So, examples of assets as I said can be a car, a house, stocks, bonds, treasury bills, treasury bills the word I mentioned. In, in when the description or bullet points were being mentioned. Generally, investment decisions are made haphazardly. So, if somebody analyzes uh, the uh, investments, it can be also as I said, it can be investments in uh, this uh, mutual funds, it can be investment in different type of fixed deposits, all these things are there. But um, in, in for without, if we do not go into the very many logical manner, general investments are done very haphazardly depending on when money is there or you invest there accordingly. So, let us continue reading it. So, it is done haphazardly without taking into consideration any criteria. So, when I am considering the criteria, it can be that I want my returns to be very high or I want my risk to be very low or I want a combination that or I want that the interest rate to be to be paid to me in a in a very slow slow manner, but it is for a long duration or I want to invest uh, for a short time, but I, I want a higher interest rate. So, they can be different concept based on which I would be investing, but that is also as I said is done very haphazardly. So, it is based on one can analyze. So, based on this one can analyze how the investment process or the whole whole um, deci decisions can be analyzed and and, and we can say whether it is a good investment decision or a bad investment decision. And obviously, there would be some metric based on which we try to analyze that. Our main emphasis for the first part in, in this initial for this whole course, in the first part of this course or this lecture is to discuss the brace, basic principles on investment science or investment management and determine what is the so called best choice of investment. So, what would the word best uh, what which I am using is is in a very general sense best does not mean that is best for you or is best for me. It can be best for one investor, but depending on what his or her criteria investment is it may not suit my bill or may not suit your bill. So, this best course of action has to be done um, relatively. So, the best choice investment we can undertake depending on a, on a huge sets of constraints which would be there. What can be the constraint? Constraint can be my total amount of investment, amount of money which I have in my pocket is say for example, 1 lakh rupees only or maybe it is infinite, huge amount. Infinite means I have a huge amount of money, but I cannot invest or I do not want to invest in stock markets. This can be only in the, in the bond market, it can be only in the, in the fixed um, securities it can be only in land, it can be only in gold. So, that will depend on, on my choice or the investor's choice where he or she wants to invest. Later on, that means after the initial discussion is over. So, we will try to keep the initial part as brief as possible, because the whole second part is quite uh, substantial and we will definitely cover uh, all the nuances to the maximum possible extent. For the second part of the course, we will deal exclusively or, or for this lecture, we will dis, dis deal exclusively with financial derivatives 
and different examples being options, futures, forwards, swaps, they can be different type of swaps, swaps can be based on investment, liability, can be fixed interest rate, uh, floating interest rate, can be foreign, foreign currency, domestic currency. Along with that, we will learn about the famous Black-Scholes model, how to find a volatility. So, what is volatility? Is it only standard deviation or is it, is it called risk as we just mentioned few minutes back? And we will discuss in, in a simplistic theoretical framework that what is the distributions for the stock prices and how they can be analyzed and what we mean there by uh, volatility, what we mean by uh, rate of return and all these things. We make, must make a subtle distinction between investment and savings. So, while the formal which is the investment signifies a portion of the wealth which is held for its wealth increase. So, I want to basically invest in order to increase it. So, when I consider an investment, so the investment is being done in order to increase its, its overall value. While in the later, which is basically for the savings, so I will use a different color to highlight that, the savings would be basically considered for consumption. Consumption means mainly for or utilization of the money and obviously savings would be the first step of, of, of allocating the funds and then only people will think of investing for extra some amount of, of returns depending on what is the overall surplus which is there with that uh, decision maker. For investment we can have both real as, as, as well as financial investment, real in the sense means this land, gold, a car. Car, I am just saying that it can be an investment, it can be buying a flat, buying different type of, of uh, immovable assets. But for our study, we will only consider the financial investment. So, this is this, this, co this uh, lecture series will only concentrate not on the actual uh, immovable assets, we will consider the financial assets which I mentioned that they would be the uh, financial instruments, stocks, options, uh, then different type of forwards and futures. For borrowing money, we always need some sort of collateral. So, that is a security. Security means that uh, if I um, do not keep my commitments or if the person who is taking that money does not keep the commitment, so those collateral can be used as uh, some sort of cushion based on which the money can be recovered uh, if in case the person who has um, taken that money or taken that loan would default. For borrowing money, we always need some sort of collateral against which we can get, the, get that money. The collateral can be house, jewelry, shares, cars, they can be different type of bonds, different type of investments, they can be considered as, as collateral. Collateral is as, as sort of security security in the no sense in the no, not in the second line which you are going to consider here security means a type of cushion such that you do not cancel your obligations security in in reality a security is just a piece of paper which represents the investors right over the property of say for example the company shares which we say so it is basically a piece of paper which has given me some right to get some benefits from the company depending on the money paid back to me which is in dividends or what, whatever it is. The investor may or may not exercise those rights. So, when, I, when we come to the options, we will understand that exercising the, the rights for different type of financial instruments or deriv derivatives would have different implications. The investor may or may not exercise those rights depending on what he or she thinks about the future prospect of the company and how it will pay him or her the benefit of holding this piece of paper. Remember, for legally holding this piece of paper, the investor has to make payments for purchasing. So, obviously, if I have legal this piece of paper, I have made some, some payment to the company, which means I have paid and bought some small portion of that company, which in a very crude sense, I am saying that, it is basically the, the security of the, the share which I have about the company. The question which will automatically come out as we are discussing and uh, during the main part of the of this in lectures is that 
how does we evalu evaluate the investment? So, do we evaluate the investment based on the amount of money which is invested? Do we evaluate the um, um, uh, in investment based on the final amount of money which we get back or sh what, what should be the case or should we analyze depending on the fluctuation of its rate of return or should we analyze by finding out the expected value. I am using the expected value very loosely, I will come to the actual mathematical definitions later. So, expected value uh, can have different connotations depending on the type of example we consider. So, how does one evaluate this investment of money for purchasing this security? And so, when you are trying to analyze the, the investment and then try to find out the, what would be the rate. So, there are two rates of returns which we did discuss. So, the two rates of returns are rate of return which we denote by small r and I will come to the formula later on. And another is basically the total rate of return total return not a rate, total rate of return is total return and we will come in the next next slide. So, the rate of return which is small r is given by the ratio or uh, of the difference in the investment which is happening divided by the initial investment. So, if I consider these terms one by one. So, the denominator i t naught. So, i is basically the investment and the suffix which you have small t is basically the time at what time. So, if I have capital I suffix t is equal to 0, it will mean the investment which is at time t is equal to 0. So, if I invest I, let us call it I naught. So, because repeating t is equal to 0 would be uh, too much uh, repetition. So, we will mention I naught as the initial value of the investment. I 1 or I t or I 2 whatever it is would be the final investment. So, what if we if I consider the numerator, so it is the difference between the final investment and the initial investment. So, the left hand term I t capital T is basically the final investment and I naught is basically the initial investment. So, di di dividing the change of the investment divided, uh, divided by the initial investment will give me the rate of return. So, and obviously, rate of return small r can be both positive and negative as we will see, because it will be positive if i t is greater than i naught and it will be negative otherwise. So, where this r is the rate of return and we will be coming back to this rate of return or almost discussing this each and every step as we continue with the course or the lectures, where a small r is the rate of return and i capital T which is the in the suffix is the end of the period's return at time t is equal to capital T in wealth is the amount of money while i t is equal to 0 is the beginning of the time period t is equal to 0 investment value which is there and the values can be in dollars, yens, rupees, dirhams whatever it is. So, now I uh, in this 10th slide I give the simplistic um, uh, scale diagram that how the input and output can be analyzed considering the time scale. So, we have the time scale which is basically starting at t is equal to 0 goes to capital T small t is equal to capital T and this arrow coming inside basically means it is an investment which is happening I invest and I t is equal to capital T is basically the output which is going out after the investment has been done and analyzed for a time period of capital T. So, is the same thing. So, if you check the overall rate of return, the rate of return is given by the difference on the investment divided by the initial investment. Now, coming back to the total return which was there in the last to last slide. So, so total of uh, total return would be given by this simple formula where the denominator remains the same which is the initial investment, but the final is investment is only utilized to calculate the total return. So, in the numerator we do not have the difference between the final investment and the initial investment, it is only the final investment. So, capital R is equal to I capital T divided by I naught and that will be if uh, it can be greater than 1 and can be less than 1. So, where capital R is the total return, I t is the end of the period, period return that is at time t is equal to capital T 
of the, in the in the wealth sense what is the total value and i not being at is basically the beginning of the period investment which is at t is equal to 0 so here again the same diagram but now the perspective is from not small r is basically from capital r so the diagram looks the same the which is the time frame only in the calculations we have used capital r and not small r coming to treasury bill so this is a government bond usually for 91 days 3 months such that making an investment at the beginning of the period whatever period is we can get our investment plus some interest rate depending on what is the rate of return for the treasury bills so the treasury bills can have generally have a high return with respect to the other investments so we will consider that uh, we make some investment in the treasury bills after 3 months we get back our investment which is the principal amount plus some interest rate so that based on that that will give you some idea that how the is the treasury bill what is the rate of return of the treasury bill so we can get our investment plus some interest rate as i mentioned depending on what is the rate of return for the treasury bill the rate of return for the treasury bill is if you remember I mentioned this is also termed as the risk free interest rate which is denoted by risk free interest rate which is denoted by small r. Now the question would arrive immediately that uh, as we can find out the risk free interest rate by using small r so we could also do and find out the risk free interest rate using capital R also that is possible and there the form the formula remains the same only the way of how you handle the problems later on it will come out. So the rate of return for the T bill is also termed as the risk free interest rate capital R or small r whatever it is as technically the investment for T bill does not have any sort of risk which I mentioned risk free interest rate or uncertainty involved with it. So basically that will give that you will later on you will see you will give a benchmark based on which you can analyze many of the decisions. What are long term bonds and uh, if you remember when we were discussing the brief discussion I did mention about the long term bonds and short term bonds only. So obviously there would be other type of bonds. But let us discuss the simplistic uh, definition of long term bonds. So this involves loaning money for a long duration of time. Long duration of time can be 2 years, 3 years whatever it is. The investor on the lender buying these um, bonds because if the bonds are floated the investor will buy. Hence lends the money to the borrower that is the person and if I buy say for, say for example some long term bonds or some ones from the government so basically I would be the investor and, and the, the person who has taken that would be the government. The duration of long term bonds can be for 2 years, 5 years and 10 years so which means that they can be for a long duration of time so obviously they have to be compensated by a higher level of returns also but they would be risk because longer you go down the line the time frame framework the, the as the rate may not be that important then what is important would be the risk it is being faced by the investor. In doing so the borrower commits to make cash payments at equal intervals of time these payments are known as the coupons. So coupons means small piece say to say for example small piece of paper so which is basically um, initially I make and then I get back some coupons on, a, on an equal interval at times and when the overall investment expires ends I get the principal amount plus the last um, or last or whatever um, uh, interest rate is there still pending. So this this um, coupon payments are the, the incremental payments which are being given back to me depending on my on my investment which I have done. So these payments are known as the coupon bonds we also have a long term government bonds also. So financial intermediaries or financial institutions or FIs are the organization which issue financial claim against themselves. So if bank A is borrowing from bank B or bank B is basically borrowing from bank C. So they would be the financial intermediaries and they would be some sort of financial claim in case say for example one of that uh, FIs basically does uh, default or does not is not able to pay back that amount. 
So, a, a typical commercial bank issues financial claim against itself in the form of debt. So, use a savings account. So, these commercial banks which they they use the financial claims against the the investments or saving banks based on which they they withdraw the money or utilize the money. I am not saying what you withdraw, they utilize that money in order to basically uh, invest the, that amount of money in government projects and so on and so forth, such that the rate return which, which the government gets from the government investments does compensate the investment which has been done in the savings account. Point one. Point number two also re re remember that there should be a match between the time durations of the investment that is the savings banks which, which I have or the fixed deposit which I have and also where the money has been utilized. So, if I basically only uh, have a fixed deposit of 5 um, um, say for example, 5 years or say for example, 3 years then the amount of money which has been given by me, given means um, uh, to the bank to make a fixed deposit that should be basically matched with some project where the government is, is lending the money for the same duration of time because if the duration of the time is not same, there is a mismatch. Mismatch in the sense, say for example, I go after 5 years and I tell I want to basically uh, end my or take out that money or fixed deposit and utilize it whatever I want to. But if the government has lent it for a longer time, time duration, obviously they would be mis mismatch because the government does not have the money, say for example, in order to pay back the amount of money which you, the government owes, owes to you. Point one. Point number two also re remember that as I mentioned that longer the time durations, the interest rates would be high. So, when you are making an investment or an investor is, is um, giving us deposit to the bank, they would be a a decision or, or, or a thought process should be going on, on inside the mind of the investor based on both the interest rate on a long term basis and also on the requirement of the money which is needed by the investor. Because I would not be keeping any, any cash as such and, and I want to basically keep it in such a way that I also get back some investment based on the huge amount of cash which I may have. So, this can turn out to be in, I, I basically invest in fixed deposit, mutual funds and so on and so forth. So, the question, so now coming back to the risk and return. So, the question which arises naturally while taking, uh, trying to analyze any stock is how do we rank them and, 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 and what are the agreed out on, upon norms based on which or a metric based on which we can analyze. The general agreed upon metric are two things, one is the return and the risk. So, return and the risk and risk here we are considering as the variance. So, other metrics like skewness, courtesies can also be utilized when you are trying to basically analyze the, the, the skewness and the courtesies factor. For an outcome, if you are, are assured 100 percent sure if we are that it is sure to give us a benefit, then we are not concerned about the chance that it will not happen and the corresponding probability that we will will be that we will be denied any benefit from that outcome. So, when it is basically um, uh, 100 percent sure, so, in that case we are not concerned about the chances of the fluctuation because if it is 100 percent sure I know that what would is the total amount, amount of return I will get or the total amount of money which I get. But in reality we know that in maximum the cases we have to face the game of chances or the chances or probabilities are there and hence we should be aware of the probabilistic return of the outcome based on where the investment is being done. So, why I am saying the investment is done because different type of investment would have different type of, of distributions or returns based on which returns means the word R or capital R or small r which will be utilizing for the calculation would remain the same in the maximum of the cases. But we should be aware that how the probabilistic uh, distribution of the returns for different scenarios would, would uh, happen depending on the amount of money which I am investing. Amount of money is important, yes, but more important is that what type of investment I am doing in different type of financial instruments. For an outcome which is random or probabilistic, we denote it by x. So, x is basically a symbol based on which we try to analyze the, the investment. And here later on we will see 
that x would be replaced by capital R or small r depending on that is the main variable based on which you want to do all the calculations for the, uh, the expected value as well as the variance. Corresponding to this random variable, we have also have the concept of the average or mean of this outcome. So, average mean, arithmetic mean or say for example, later on we will see the sample mean, all these things in, in the very simplistic sense, we will take it as the same word, but subtle uh, concept differences are definitely there, which we would not discuss if it is not required. We will just use the concept of the expected value. Corresponding to this random variable, we have an average or mean of this outcome, which is termed as the expected value and is denoted by E x. Simultaneously along with the average return, we are also concerned about the uncertainty involved in the outcome, because if it is a random, there is fluctuation. If there is fluctuation, there is dispersion, which is basically we will consider in, 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 in course of our discussion as such. So, this uncertainty we face regarding the outcome is basically called the variance. So, if you remember I did mention the risk and return framework based on which we will analyze the Markowitz model and I also mentioned that the main metric was basically expected value and variance. This uncertainty we face regarding the outcome is basically called the variance which will be denoted by V x, x is the basically the random variable. The variance is also known as the risk and it is sometimes sort of cost associated with the uncertainty on the random variable. So, if expected value is high, it is good for me. If, if variance is high, it is bad for me. So, that would be considered some sort of cost based on which I should analyze my total investment. So, because if you remember, we have been saying that we will analyze the investment as, an, as required depending on what my rate of return and the variance of the standard deviation is. As just discussed, risk is usually denoted by this formula, which is sigma square So sigma square is equal to the expected value of x minus the expected value x whole square, that is per, as per the formula. There are other quantifiable methods of denoting this risk also, but for all practical purposes, the second moment of a random variable because the first moment is related to the mean and the second moment is related to the dispersion. So, which is basically the, the, uh, the concept of risk is, is basically the variance or the square root of the variance would also be ut utilized. But for all practical purposes, the second moment of a random variable suffices to quantify this risk. Other measures of risk which have just we have just mentioned are say for example, skewness and courtesies and obviously we will come that, that skewness and courtesies both of them are not risk. So, we will consider the odd moments mean then the third moment then the fifth moment and so on and so forth are all positive returns while the um, uh, as variance is basically the second moment. So, the corresponding even moments second, fourth, sixth I would basically be denoted as some sort of loss or risk. So, I am saying uh, considering is in a very general term, we will see that how the first moment and the second moment are more than sufficient in order to basically analyze any of the problems. Other measurements of risk which you have just mentioned are skewness and courtesies and are found by using the respective third and the fourth moment which I mentioned. So, here the formula would be for the, uh, for the case when we have the skewness. this is the third moment and for the courtesies which is the fourth moment. So, if you have x as a discrete variable which I was talking about, so x can basically B of, uh, of two types. So, discrete is one, another would be the continuous case. So, if x is discrete, then we know by the formula two things we need to find out. As I mentioned, we have been mentioning in the last two slides, we need to find out the expected value or the mean value. So, that is given by the 
the summation of x i into f x i where x i is basically the um, So, as we have been discussing, so now we, we, we know that there is expected value and the variance. So, expected value is basically what is, is basically the first moment, variance is the second moment. I will come to that later on. So, as discussed, risk is usually denoted by the, the concept of variance and the formula for whether it is a discrete case or a continuous case uh, that would not uh, matter, but the formula for finding out the variance is given by this. So, there are other quantifiable ways of denoting this concept of risk, but for all the practical purposes which we have for our discussion, um, the second moment of a random variable would be sufficient enough to quantify the concept of risk. So, other measures of risk we have just mentioned are can be skewness and courtesy, even though I am using the word other measures of risk that technically is not true in the sense that when we co uh, consider the even the odd moments as the first, the third, the fifth, they will be considered as positive. So, they would be the my like mean is basically some positive return which is coming which is basically considered as, as something good. While we consider the variance of the risk would basically be all the even moments like va the variance, the fourth moment, the sixth moment and all these things. So, they are something which is bad and we should reduce while for the first set of, of the odd moments are something which should basically increase. So, other measure of risk which we have just mentioned would be which I wanted to clarify is the skewness and skurtosis and they are found by out by using the third and the fourth moment respectively which is for the third moment and the fourth moment. So, if we have x as, as a discrete variable, so variables can be of two types, we will be considered in, in, in the obviously they can be a combination of that also, but I am not going to go through that, we will only consider the variables for at least this course can be of two types, would be discrete one and the continuous one. So, you have if we have x as discrete. Then according to the formula, our expected value would be given by this, which actually means basically so this would mean basically E of x summation for all the x's of x into probability of capital X is equal to small x. So, that will give me the expected value when it is the, the discrete case. And considering it a discrete case, we only need to find out its second moment also. So, the second moment would be given by, I should highlight it, not wait. So, the second moment is given by this where we find out the difference between the realized values and is expected value and then square it. So, we are trying to find out uh, and multiply it by the corresponding probability. So, we are trying to find out the dispersions on, on to the right and the left, but we are squaring that and, and giving them weightages depending on the probability. In case if we have a continuous variable, then the corresponding formula for the expected value and the variances are this. So, here we, we find it out that the expected value is given the summation the integration I am not writing the lower limit and the upper limit is it x which is the real realized value into f of d d x which is equal to x and f of so okay let me come back to this bit so here 
this part. Now, it is a repetition of the same thing, but I will highlight it what is important. So, this f of x or similarly the probability which you have considered is basically we, we will be coming back to that time and again, but we, I wanted to bring it here because as we have considered both the expected value for the discrete case and the continuous case, these are basically based on the random variable on which we are trying to find out the rate of return that can be either capital R or small r. So, actually it would be better if we write r f of r dr and in this case it is basically r probability of r is equal to capital R is equal to r. Similarly, in the case when we come to the variances again the same concept because if you have been able to discuss the first moment then obviously, the second moment concept would continue in the same manner discussion. So, the variance is given by the difference between the realized value and the expected value square them up and multi and, and basically taking the um, uh, multiplying them by the probability and summing them up which we have. So, f of x is basically the pdf corresponding to that x which x is now being r it will be the pdf based for rate of return. So, it can be either capital R or small r. For n assets discussed, so consider now I am expanding my scope of discussion. So, now till now we have been saying that what is the formula for uh, uh, the rate of return capital R, small r, how do you find out the expected value, how you find out the variance and so on and so forth. Now, expand the discussion and why we need to expand the discussion, I will come that back to that within few seconds or few minutes. Because a portfolio is not formed by only one asset. So, it will basically have different assets. So, as we have found out the variance or, or the standard deviation for each and every asset whether using formula capital R or small r, we have also found out its expected value using capital R or small r. But now what the important factor is and which will come out later on time and again we will be highlighted is, is that what is the correlation which is there between asset 1 and asset 2 or between the ith and the jth asset where i and j are not the same. Because i and j or if both are same then it will basically revert back to the concept where the correlation is 1 and the concept of covariance which we will discuss within few minutes would basically lead, lead us to the fact that it is actually the variance when i is equal to j. For n assets consider x suffix i, so that is the random variable and their mean value is given by mu suffix i which is expected value x i and the variance would be considered as sigma square suffix i. Now, if we have as I said, said if we have more than uh, one asset then obviously, we would basically have the covariances and the covariances would, would be the fact which I mentioned that when i is equal to j, we have the variances, when i is not is equal to j, we will basically have the, the of the diagonal alignment. What is that? Uh, please bear with me, I will come to that. Moreover, if the correlation coefficient between the ith and the j asset is denoted by rho i j, then the return and the variance of the collection of the assets which we consider that is for the portfolio is given by the formula which we will consider within few minutes. Now, here one important thing is to be noted that you will ask the question so and, and um, ask yourself say for example, if the rate of return which is collect, uh, found out from the stock market if it is known then and if I also know, know my amount of money which I have in my pocket which I want to invest. So, then what is required to be known to formulate the portfolio? The answer would be if you have say for example, 100 rupees or 1000 rupees or 1 lakh rupees and in front of you there are different type of financial assets. So, the total am amount of combination which you can do is infinite, but is it the right way how you analyze the total amount of investment? depending on what you think is right or wrong for you. Because say for example, I am a risk averse person or I, it may happen that I, I, I am a person who 
uh, doesn't want to avoid risk but want to basically take the risk. So, how do I analyze for the same set of, of assets which are in front of me for the same amount of money which is there in my pocket, how is it is analyzed. There the concept would come out that you need to find out in the very simplistic sense the number of assets which you are going to buy which is ni. So, small ni no, not, uh, not the uh, n which I see here. So, I will basically denote okay, let me to make a little bit more detailed discussion. Let me replace this with capital N. This there, there is no change in the formula just a change of my explanation so that there is no confusion. So, what we need to find out is basically n i. <coughs> so, this small n i n 1 is the number of as, asset which I buy. So, is the number of stocks so which are all integers. So, say for example, if there are capital n number of assets. So, the total number of different assets which I can find in numbers is small n i to small n capital n as in the suffix. Now, actually the stock prices would be given by S1 to Sn at any point of time. So, why I am discussing is because I need to basically bring to the to the to forward to, to forth the discussion that what is WII and why it is important. Now, these rate of return, this rate of return, so based on on um, x. So, these rate of returns are basically found from the x. I will come back to these discussions time and again, but let me uh, start the ball running. So, this rate of return are found out from s which is the stock price and similarly the variances sigma square i are also found from and uh, this r or, or x whatever you call them from s also. Now, what is important for you to note is the following. So, if your total amount of investment is whatever the amount is say for example, the amount being A. Now, what you will and consider that the whole amount of money which you had in your pocket A is totally exhausted by investment which means that in that case A should be equal to N i S i plus dot dot till n n s n. That means, all the investment which was there has been taken care from my pocket. Now, if I consider, so this a is actually summation of n i s i. Now, if I want to consider the weights, so let me come below. So, the weights w i would be equal to n i S i divided by summation of N i into S i, which means the investment total amount of investment which I am doing for the IS, IIT asset divided by the total amount of investment for all the assets will give me the weights. Now, the discussion proceeds very logically. Why we are doing it? Reason is that obviously, the mathematical would be the mathematics would be the main reason because I do not want to go into too much nitty gritties is that if I consider w i s obviously, they are between 0 and 1 and logic logically so and they are continuous. So, trying to basically formulate a simple linear programming when we see it later would be easy for us to solve. But if we consider the concept of where you are trying to basically optimize the n i's number of stocks which is in which should be integer then it would basically be a integer pro programming problem. Not that it cannot be solved it is also easy there are different type of formulation different type of packages to solve that. But I thought trying to basically discuss the, the weights and as well as the n i's and, and trying to uh, give the solution for the weights and then understand that how it can be brought back and you can find out the, the number of assets would be a much more interesting way to deal with it. So, when w i's have been considered, so obviously the logical question which I just mentioned few seconds back is that the sum of the weights are 1. Now, if it is 1, 
then the expected value of, uh, of the portfolio would be this. So, this x bar i is basically the average return for the um, random variable x which is basically either capital R or small r. So, multiplying the weights into the average return summing it up would give me the total portfolio return. And if I basically follow the same concept for the variance, so the variance of the of the portfolio would now be the double summation of w i into w j into sigma i j. So, sigma a j is basically the covariance which I have been talking about and w i and w j are the corresponding weights for the ith and the jth asset. So, if you remember I did mention something to do with uh, the principal diagonal and the off the diagonal elements, I think I mentioned about the off the diagonal elements. So, here is what I meant. If I have the overall um, matrix denoting the total combinations of all these uh, capital N number of assets, then the principal diagonal which I will have would basically be the variances of, of the first element will be the variance of the first asset and the last one would be the variances of the last asset which is capital N. While the of the diagonal element would be the covariances between the ith and jth one which is denoted here. So, sigma i j is basically the covariances. So, that multiplied by w i and w j would give me each and every element to and when we sum it up we find out the total um, portfolio returns considering there are capital number of, of n number of uh, assets. So, this covariance is this correlation coefficient sorry correlation coefficient is given by the formula this correlation coefficient formula which is here and, and the um, covariance is given by covariance being multiplicative uh, uh, factors of or we are multiplying the correlation coefficient, the standard deviation for the ith asset and the standard deviation of the jth asset. And in case when we expand it, the first term would basically be the term corresponding to w 1 into w 1 which is w 1 square into rho 1 1 which is 1 and sigma 1 into sigma 1. So, that would basically be the first element which will be given by w 1 square into sigma 1 square. Similarly, if I go to the 2 comma 2 element, I am ignoring the of the diagonal elements now that would be w 2 square into sigma 2 square because here in the first case also and the second case also rho 1 1 rho 1 2 till rho capital N capital N are all 1. Not the yeah, yes the row values are also all 1 because that is the uh, correlation values which we have. So, these are 1 while the of the diagonal element if you consider they are appearing twice. So, if I consider say for example, one comma two and two comma one element which is here. So, it will be one will be w 1 w 2 into rho 1 2 into sigma 1 into sigma 2 and if I consider the opposite mirror image it will always also be the same. So, that is why when we do it we find a term 2 which will be coming up later on. So, the principal diagonal plus twice of any one of the of the diagonal set of elements will give me my total variance of the portfolio. Now, having said that let us now build up the story for the um, we will be enc encountering that much later on. Let, let us build up the story for the Markowitz mo model and the efficient frontier and all these things. So, having found out the variance and the, and the this uh, mean value, our question is next what? 
So, we need to basically pictureize it and see it in such a way that in the Cartesian coordinate we have the risk of the standard deviation on the x axis and return on the y axis and we try to basically plot each and every asset which you have found out as points in the Cartesian coordinate. Now, the points need not be because the standard deviation value or the risk value would definitely not be negative, so, but the returns technically uh, can be negative also. So, but I have only drawn in the first quad, uh, uh, quadrant. So, the security would have basically some risk and return given by this. So, this is the first security, this is the second security, this is the third security and there would be n number of securities. This is the or fourth one and this is the third one. So, the risk and return for them would be say for example, R 1, I am using the bar for in order to denote it the, the mean value and if I consider the variance only it will be this. If I consider the second one, when I consider the third one, and when I consider the fourth one. So, these points. Now, the uh, answer question would be that how do we analyze? So, before considering that, that our main idea would be that we are drawing it in order to understand whether the risk return framework which we have does give us some very good idea that how does the overall set of um, assets look as we make the portfolio point one and does the, the shape and size basically the shape of that overall set of portfolios give us some intuitive feel that how we can solve it in the mathematical sense. So, in the with this I will end the third lecture and in the continuing in the fourth lecture I will consider generally the, the concept of efficient frontier and so on and so forth which can lead us and, and make the overall basis based on which we will be considering a huge portions which is related to portfolio management and investment analysis. Have a nice day and thank you very much.